Hello, my name is Chris and I will review the 2020 Mazda CX-30. This is the mid-trim GS model all-wheel drive with the all-important luxury package. With metallic paint, this tester, including destination taxes and environmental levies, totals $37,269. That is pretty good for this level of luxury. Over 60 months, that comes out to $639 a month. That is aggressive pricing. I will explain. This is, on balance, a big subcompact crossover. Everything's getting bigger, always bigger. First, the exterior. I think this Mazda exterior looks so good. The Mazda design philosophy translates well across the lineup. They are ahead of their non-premium competitors. Take a look at it. This mid-trim model comes with electronic driving aids, heated leather steering, heated seats, dual zone climate control, and these 18-inch wheels with reasonable 55 ratio tires, which contribute to a good ride quality. These are not low-profile tires, thank God. Ross, for some inexplicable reason, decided not to totally stuff the trunk with his crap, and we can actually see how much space there is back here. And there is a lot of space. The trunk is pretty deep. The rear seat, though, is the only real weakness, as this car looks so big on the outside, and it was so tight-fitting sitting behind myself. Fortunately, the front passengers have a lot of room. Mazda makes good on charging you more for what is really a Mazda 3 made into a crossover with a higher seating position and this gives you a commanding view of the road, a key characteristic of this type of vehicle. Also, this synthetic leather is quite good and the seats, despite looking very bolstered, are quite soft and cozy and with lumbar support, I thought the whole thing was very comfortable. The sound insulation is very good. This combined with a tasteful interior design, with soft touch materials, and a steering wheel that could have come off a well-optioned BMW, almost makes one wonder how did Mazda take such a lead in interior quality over its rivals. The infotainment is average and the rotary interface is a drag, though quite a few Mazda owners like it. I do not and do not understand, I prefer a touchscreen interface. Driving CX-30 hit me like a kick in the nuts. The quality was overwhelming from the moment I looked at it to when I began driving it. It does the core tasks so well. The well-dosed suspension is pleasant enough despite a rear torsion beam. Great touch points, softly tuned interfaces without feeling flimsy, a feeling of quality in the driver's seat, roomy enough in front, top-notch touch points, and I repeat, it is quiet here and that is luxury. One could say that Mazda cut costs with the engine transmission, and Ross also thinks this a bit. I differ and see a reliable combination that seems to have a good track record in the real world. At 2.5 liters, this four-cylinder engine produces 186 horsepower and 186 pounds of torque and is combined with a six-speed automatic transmission that performed, in my opinion, flawlessly. All-wheel drive pushes fuel consumption to 9.9 .9 liters in the city and 7.7 .7 liters on the highway, or 35-32 mpg. I must say, in spite of my praise, its competitors are hyper-competitive. Despite this, Mazda is fighting tooth and nail for your money. Here are my thoughts on the road. Hello car lovers driving the 2020 Mazda CX-30. Uh, great catch from Ross. Been a while, I've wanted to try this vehicle. I know a few people who have bought some and they are very satisfied and I wanted to see what all the buzz was about. The micro segmentation of the crossover segment continues. We had the CX-3, we had the CX-5, they needed something in the middle. And I think it is appropriate in this case because the CX-3 is a bit too small. For the outside, the outside styling I think is where Mazda is so strong. You get CX-9 level styling in a Mazda CX-30 GS. So you're really getting a premium value in terms of exterior appearance. You're getting a premium value in terms of this ex exterior paint. This paint has been out for quite some time now. It is an option and it is beautiful. I love the 18 inch wheels. They didn't go 19 inch for this tester that they sent us with 55 ratio tires. It's just the right combination. I'm driving here in Lachine's, Lachine, which is Montreal, Canada. Montreal's shitty roads, uh, horrible roads, and it is, it is handling them 
99% of the time very, very well. It only becomes slightly undone on the largest bumps, but then so do 90% of vehicles become undone on those bumps. So that's pretty awesome. Suspension, really well calibrated for what I think the buyer of this vehicle wants. Uh, yes, I think people want a certain amount of sportiness, just like people have subscriptions or memberships at the gym, but they really don't go that often, right? They don't feel comfortable there. Who wants to go lift a dumbbell for half an hour? I don't think so. And I think this is the way people want to drive. They want it to look sporty, but they want it to be a little bit comfortable. Mazda CX-30 accomplishes that task very well. On the inside now, in front, I find it's reasonably roomy enough. I like the high seating position. I love these comfortable seats. They look perhaps a little worrisome with their bolstering, but they're really soft, really well padded. The interior design here, very good. I'd say that it, it mimics somewhat that Mazda 3 that I drove uh, uh, quite a few times in the last few months. Lovely, nice steering wheel, nice leather steering wheel. The touch points like the interface for the infotainment, the knobs for the climate control, even the, the, the buttons here for the on the steering wheel. High level, very high level. Mazda never cheaps out on the touch points. They're like Kia, they, they never cheap out. It's always high quality stuff. And consequently, it makes you feel your money, which is important, especially for the price conscious buyer. Visibility, well, visibility is not the best. These side windows are small, but I can see, still see out. The front window, I can see out. Ross makes the remark that the dash is very low, giving you a very nice full outward visibility. I agree with his comment, and that was a very good comment on his part. The rear seats are a joke, right? They're not very big. <laughs> I can't think of one of its competitors that's smaller, really. I would say that the only place that its competitors are truly ahead of it is the rear seat room. If you think of the Honda HRV, which I find price-wise is a competitor to this vehicle, the whole thing is a little bit more roomier, yet looks so much smaller on the outside. It's kind of like plays with your mind, that Honda Ergonomic. The Toyota CHR is also, I think, a, a, a worthy competitor. And it, it, it's more, uh, perhaps in, from a styling point of view, Ross makes the remark, it's probably the sportiest looking of the three. And I have to agree with him. It is, however, well done on the inside. However, it does have a thin steering wheel. Perhaps it doesn't feel quite as stylish on the inside. And for sure, the exterior styling is very different to say the least. So there's a lot of choice out there, but I think that given the, the key characteristics of the crossover, the, the high ride height, the commanding view, the convenience, the, the tasteful styling of Mazda, the incredible interior and quality of the touch points, it, it just puts it ahead of everyone, I think, in terms of uh, the, the category. So it is my number one pick on the lease, uh, certainly recommendable on the purchase. Ross puts it at recommendable on the lease, recommendable on the short to medium term purchase. He makes a remark that he, he while he was driving, he thought the transmission was slightly slow. I didn't feel that, I must say. So kind of a little different opinion going on over here. And also we both agree that the engine is tried, tested and true. The 2.5 liter has been around forever and there's no real known problems about that. So that's reassuring. Another remark that I make that Ross makes often about Mazda, I didn't make it on this one, but I make often about Mazda, is the reassuring warranty. Yeah, he's so right about that. I mean, if you do a lot of mileage, three years bumper to bumper and limited kilometers and five years bumper to bumper and limited kilometers is really reassuring. And those are the thoughts on this excellent Mazda CX-30. By the way, if you like this video, like it. If you don't like it, don't like it. And if you really like it, you should subscribe. And that is it.